Welcome to Pat Stats. Today is June 15th. The Mets on this date since 2015 are 3-2. In 2015, they won 4-3 on a walk-off. Noah Syndergaard started the game for the Mets. His first start against his former team, the Blue Jays. It was a Monday night at City Field. It was, it was a close game. The Mets took a 2-1 lead in the sixth inning by RBI doubles by um, Juan Lagares and um, Ruben Tejada. The Blue Jays tied it in the ninth on a Jose Bautista home run, and that 2-2 two -two, two -two score held up to the 11th when the Mets tied and won the game. Lucas Duda hit an RBI bloop single to tie it, and then Flores hit a base hit up the middle to win it for the Mets, 4-3. In 2016, they also won against the Pirates, 11-2. Noah Syndergaard pitched again for the Mets, and he did pretty good. He went eight and a third innings. He started the ninth, didn't quite finish it, though. He allowed two total runs, one of them earned, but the Mets' offense exploded that night. Um, uh, home runs were hit were Kelly Johnson and Wilmer Flores, and that was more than enough for the Mets and Noah Syndergaard's 11 strikeouts to win the game. In 2017, it was not a great game. For the Mets. They lost 8-3 to against the Nationals. Robert Gazelman pitched. He allowed 7 runs in 5 innings and he got the loss. Rene Rivera and I believe Wilmer Flores both hit home runs for the Mets but um, that was not not enough. The Nationals had a good offensive day and they won. In 2018 they also lost. Um, I believe the score was 6-3 to against the Diamondbacks. Um, um, they, they did hit a home run from Dominic Smith but um, Seth Lugo, he allowed five runs in five innings, and they lost the game. In 2019, though, it was a better game. Pete Alonso hit, uh, hit a moonshot in the first inning to basically the upper deck in City Field to give the Mets a 3 nothing lead in the first. G.D. Davis also hit a home run the next inning. The Mets slowly let that lead slip away and almost let it slip away in the ninth when Edwin Diaz allowed a bloop single to one of the Cardinals players, but then he got thrown out. Um, their pinch runner got thrown out at home to end the game. Kind of a crazy finish to that game. Noah Syndergaard, six innings, um, four runs allowed, but he, he had to leave the game with a hamstring injury. But the Mets ended up winning 8-7. Now, to switching gears, I'm just going to talk about a random stat that I made up. I, I think, um, I'm sure people have thought of it before, but it's not an official stat or anything, and I think it's a good way to um, kind of judge a pitcher. So we know how um, they have, you have a record, wins and losses, but sometimes the losses, they don't reflect the pitcher the right way. For, for example, Jacob deGrom, he seems uh, so many times, countless times, he allows one or two runs, and the Mets just don't score for him, and he ends up getting the loss. This new stat will um, create a better balance of wins and losses so that um, the pitchers, it'll help eliminate some of the tough luck losses that, that they'll um, get. So basically, I'm going to call it an earned loss. So what it is, a pitcher gets an earned loss if they um, give up, if they like allow more runs than their team ends up scoring in the entire game. So for example, if Jacob deGrom pitches seven innings and allows one run for the Mets, but the Mets don't score in those seven innings. It's one nothing the opponent. And then the bullpen's in the game. They allow two runs in the eighth inning. 3 nothing the opponent. Let's say the Mets try to come back in the ninth inning. They score two runs, but they ultimately lose the game 3-2. to two. That would be a loss for Jacob deGrom. But in this new stat, that is simply a no decision because he allowed one run. The Mets would end up scoring two runs, which means if the bullpen didn't blow it, then he would have got the win. I feel like that's a good way to um, um, take away the loss from a pitcher when they don't really deserve it. If they allow more runs than their team scores, that's a loss because they could have done a little bit better, even if it's one run. I mean... That's, a, that's asking a lot, but they technically could have done better. In this case, they only allowed one run. If the Mets scored two, but then the bullpen blew it, I don't think that should be their fault. So um, we'll do some more stats in the upcoming days. But as for now, thanks for watching this episode of Pat Stats.